Thinking about buying a MacBook Air? $9.99, $11.99, wondering what else you can spend your money on? Say hello to my new little friend, Samsung Galaxy Book 2. Not the Pro, the regular Galaxy Book. You can pick one of these up for about a thousand bucks or less. This was $6.99 on sale last week at Best Buy with 16 gig and a 512 SSD. That would be $15.99 for a MacBook Air M2. $900 more. Is this a comparable device? Well, let's talk about it, okay? Because let's take Mac OS and Windows out of the equation. Let's assume you're an agnostic operating system person. You just need a web browser, you need Microsoft Office, you want Google Suite, you want Adobe products, all the things that pretty much are even keel across systems. And you don't really care whether it's Mac or Windows. Because if you do, you're probably not watching this video. In which case, I'm talking to nobody. What have you got here? You have got a killer Windows device. This thing is thin, it is light, it is small, it is portable, and if you get the midnight blue color, you will get fingerprints on the Samsung exactly the same as you will on the Apple. So they match each other perfectly, and you won't feel as though you're missing out. The difference is, you will get two USB-Cs on the Samsung, which you also get on the Apple. But then you'll get an HDMI, which you don't get unless you spend $2,000 with Apple. You'll get a headphone jack, okay? You get one on the MacBook Air too. I'll give it to you. But you get a USB-A, baby. No dongles. Dongle free life. Hashtag winning. USB-A, by default, it can be done in a small, thin, light laptop because Samsung just proved you can do it. And then as if that's not enough, Samsung turned around and said... We're just going to stick it to everybody one more time. Say hello to my micro SD card slot. You heard it. All of the ports that you realistically would need in a device today, in a machine that you can pick up right now from about seven-ish hundred dollars for the eight gig 256 or around a thousand-ish dollars for the higher spec. Folks, that's a whole lot of money of the difference and we haven't even talked about anything else yet. But that's a lot going in Samsung's camp versus the Apple camp from a connectivity point of view. So let's fire this thing up and let's take a look at the insides. The trackpads, definitely a different story. Apple's haptic trackpads are killer. Still some of my favorite trackpads on earth. I like how tall they are. I don't like how tall the trackpad is on the Samsung and that's because Samsung chose to go with a 169 ratio screen. So it shrinks the physical footprint of the device a little bit. Apple goes with a 1610, which I think is better. And so that extra height on the screen that enables us to get more work done also means the physical chassis is deeper. And so you get a better size trackpad. I also prefer the keyboard on the MacBook Air. There is nothing wrong with the Samsung keyboard. It's solid, it's precise, it's firm. I just like the slightly softer feel of the Apple keyboard. It almost makes my fingers glide a little bit more. And so this isn't a case where Apple wins the keyboard comparison because the Samsung one isn't very good. The Samsung one is great. It's just that Apple's is a little bit more polished. Screens is a little bit more difficult because I like the extra height of a 1610, but I really like the OLED. But I really like people who like my videos. So hit that like button. Do it right now while we're watching. And if you want to be amazing or even more amazing, hit that subscribe button and help me grow the channel. But let's talk about the Samsung some more. Okay, I'm gonna show you some footage here so you can see the two of them together. Here is Apple's Retina display or whatever they're calling it today. I lose track, but sometimes it's XDR this and whatever that. This is their current best screen, 13.6 inches. I like the size a lot better on the MacBook Air, but quality wise, I don't know that I would say that Apple's screen's quality is better than the Samsung's. The resolution's a little higher. Samsung's only 1920 by 1080. But by golly, you can't overlook how good OLED screens are. The blacks are magnificent. Here's some 4K footage showing LG's OLED demo so you can see that. I'm gonna give the displays a draw because I like the bigger size. Even if it is a whisker, I like the taller height of the MacBook Air, but I like the quality and the colors of the Samsung. And then we get to the internals, and in the Samsung, you're talking 16 gig 512 on the model I'm reviewing here with an Intel i7 U series chip. And then Apple obviously has their M2 processor 
and it starts at 8 gig 256. And remember, this 256 is half the speed of last year's, which I think is a real insult to a lot of folks buying this device. Does it make a massive difference in normal day-to-day -day life? No, it doesn't, but that's not the point. The point is the principle. Tech companies don't make things worse, and they sure aren't supposed to make things worse on purpose just to get you to spend more money. It feels manipulative, and I don't like it. I don't think it's a smart move, and it's one of those things where just because you can doesn't mean you should, Mr. Apple, okay? It doesn't. It gets a real, a real kind of tricky here because now we're looking at a magnificent price difference from the $6.99 that I paid or the $8.99 that it currently is, not on sale, against $15.99 for the same specifications of Mac. Can Apple do a little bit more with less? Yes, they can, but if you're a tab monster like my wife, who likes to have you know 83 tabs open in Chrome all at the same time, just in case she has to go back to one of them, that extra RAM is gonna make a difference no matter what. And so you're kind of in this tricky spot where the M2 chip does perform a little bit better. Here's some benchmarks so you can see the comparisons. Single core, not a massive amount of difference, but in multi-core, you start to see a little bit more disparity between the two but is that worth five or six hundred dollars? Or are you gonna sacrifice and go for half the memory, half the storage, still pay more money because you prefer some of the things on the Apple versus the Samsung? It's a really tough decision and it depends how much you love Mac OS because in pure value terms, I don't see the win here going Apple's way at all. Both devices are gonna last you for a few years Maybe the Apple will last you a little bit longer, but I think a lot of us at Light Tech are probably going to change the device anyway in three to four years' time. So an average user is not going to go six, seven, eight years, in which case they're both going to have a reasonable life expectancy. Battery life is going to be a little bit weaker on the Samsung, about eight hours or so on the battery-efficient setting. The MacBook Air obviously is phenomenal. Can't argue with battery life. They are killer. And as a result... There's very little heat, although they are warmer than the M1. A little bit more heat here on the Samsung. Again, if you dock, if you plug in regularly through the day, none of these things are going to matter. And so a lot of this comparison really comes down to personal preference. And that's a tricky one because in the world of Apple and Windows, personal preference is like talking about religion and politics nowadays. And it gets feisty out there. So easy, Tigers, on the comments below. I go either way and... I really would struggle, especially at $6.99 that I paid for this. I don't even know how I would justify spending another $500 to go to a MacBook Air with half the RAM and storage, let alone $900 more to get the same RAM and storage, even if I thought the MacBook Air was a slightly better device. And I'm not saying that it is, because it's pros and cons here, depending on what you're looking at. That's a significant difference when you're talking about double almost to two and a half times the price. For starters, you could check out Uncle Mikey's new artwork collection on my new Shopify store, and you could pick up some really nice, exquisite prints framed, shipped to your door for very, very reasonable sums of money. Or you could go crazy and get one of my super special fine art, big prints signed by me on some amazing museum quality archive grade paper that is so nice. I literally think kings and queens might use it to wipe their bottoms, but I have no evidence of that. The choice is yours and they are all there on the store for you to look at and purchase. You could buy one of those and this and still save money over the MacBook Air M2 with 16 gig 512. And you'll get all these extra ports. And so I, I struggle with it. Let me know what you're going to do in the comments below. Appreciate you watching. See the full reviews, both of these, over here. Till next time, subscribe and be amazing.